Welcome back everybody, this is Chad with Iraq Veteran 8888 and today we're coming at you with a new optics review. Uh, it's actually pretty hotly requested from you guys. Um, recently we put up a video on the Trigicon ACOG series of rifle scopes and uh, everybody was asking about the Elkan, like review the Elkan, check out the Elkan Spectre, you know. Alright, so we've got a couple of Elkan Spectres out here to show you guys. Uh, these are by way of Optics Planet. Uh, they sent them in for us to check out and everything and uh, show off to you guys and uh, just kind of develop an opinion about them. We're going to talk about two specific models here and uh, talk a little bit about the history of these optics and uh, Eric has some uh, interesting things to say as well because he's had some use of these over in Iraq when he was in service a little while back. But uh, the Elkan Spectre is actually a very unique optic in its operation. Unlike conventional optics that have what's uh, considered an erector tube, uh, basically it's a sliding apparatus where the lens is actually moved back and forth with a variable power optic. So say you go from one power to four power, you have to turn a dial and it moves the lenses fore and aft in the erector tube. The uh, Elkan is unique in that it has a series of prisms and basically a mirror inside and there's a uh, quick flip of a switch on the side here and you go from one power to four power basically immediately. So there's no, uh, no controls really on the outside of the uh, optic to get in the way of anything except for a, um, an illumination dial over here and the uh, battery housing. Um, one of the other unique features is that the adjustments for elevation and windage are actually external to the optic uh, compared to a conventional optic again where you have internal adjustments using a uh, windage and elevation dial and basically it moves the erector tube inside. You actually use these external adjustments here to move the entire optic on the mount which is pretty cool. Um, a little bit of the backstory behind Elkan, uh, they've been in the business for quite some time. They're actually a Canadian based manufacturer and uh, their, uh, their optics have been used uh, all over the world uh, from various uh, LEO agencies and militaries and such um, for quite some time. Uh, the original optic that um, Eric has had a lot of experience with is like the C79 and uh, that optic saw a lot of use in uh, various um, <laughs> various places around the world, various conflicts on machine guns and such, especially belt feds like the FN Mag and like the FN Mini Me and such as that. Um, the Spectre DR is kind of the top end of that entire lineup at this point. This is the most modern optic that they produce and these actually see quite a bit of use around the world as well um, in military and in just the civilian realm as you can see here. And um, basically you have a BDC reticle that goes from 100 meters to 600 meters uh, with horizontal stadia for pretty much precise shots and then after that you have basically area fire circles okay from 700 on out to a thousand meters and um, you just basically point and shoot that's what makes these optics so just simple and almost pretty much grunt proof in the big scheme of things now I have seen some uh, online reviews of these optics and uh, I've seen where people have tested like you know the box testing and all that kind of stuff with this thing and really in my opinion you don't really need to do that for an optic like this. An optic like this is a combat style optic for like a life and liberty platform or something along those lines. You zero it and you forget it. You don't need to fiddle with it and adjust it and all this kind of stuff. You just put it on a rifle, you get it zeroed for your ammo of choice, which for this gun I'm using M855 ball and you forget about it. Some of the uh, technical features of the optics, you do actually have a pretty generous eye relief uh, compared to something like a Trigicon ACOG. Uh, you don't have to be so close to the ocular lens to get a good sight picture. Your face can be a little bit further off of it. Uh, so it's a little bit more comfortable eye relief for a lot of people. The um, illumination settings are quite nice. You got five settings for the center dot, which is a 1.5 minute dot on four power, a six minute dot on one power, okay? in this particular model here. So you've got five settings for that and then you can turn the dial back the other direction and you can illuminate the entire reticle itself. And you've got five settings there as well. These are um, night vision compatible as well. So for the guys that are running like the uh, A and PVS 22s or such like clip-ons or PVS 14s and such, this will work just fine for that. That's a, a nice capability to have. And like I mentioned, the, uh, the uh, external Elevation and wind adjustments are a very simple and robust feature. Some have expressed concern about dirt and debris getting in those and locking them up over time, you know, and you know, messing up the adjustments. Uh, but like I said, this is an optic to kind of set and forget. Maybe one day we'll dunk this thing in the mud and do a few th crazy things with it and just see how it holds up. But my thing is, if you don't move it, there's nothing to mess up. Uh, the uh, optic is mounted to the rifle here, this little AR-15, by way of a uh, arms mount that's built in. You got two just quick detached levers basically. Um, 
a lot of people frown upon the arms mounts, but I've never really had a problem with them. I've used arm stuff quite some time. Also a neat feature of the uh, mount is that it has these little ports where you can actually zip tie the arms in place to keep the mount basically semi-permanently attached. There's no way those arms are gonna come off of there unless you cut those zip ties and get them out of here. Um, other than that, there's really not a whole lot about this optic that needs to be talked about. Um, like I said, the unique features are basically the external adjustments, the uh, quick adjustment to four power from one power by the flip of a lever instead of a dial. Um, that's a nice feature. You do have some uh, very crude backup sights on top of the optic. Um, basically, like think uh, pocket pistol sight radius in the big scheme of things. Good for about 10 to 25 meters, basically just looking over the optic and pointing and shooting. Um, cost. These optics are on the pricey side, as is pretty much anything that's a high quality piece of glass that you're going to put on a gun like this. Um, these do come in about the $2,000 price point. Now, a comparable ACOG, just to compare apples to apples for the most part, with an RMR, it's probably going to run you about the same. Uh, the RMR capability on an ACOG would give you four power, and the optic, look over the top and you've got a one power dot that you can basically immediately go from four to one power instead of flipping the lever. So you might be able to get a little bit quicker side acquisition if you have to go from one power to four power. I could see where an optic like this would do well in something like three gun competitions or just on a life and liberty gun, or just if you want a high quality piece of glass to drop on your favorite rifle, this thing will definitely fit the bill. Now, Eric's uh, 1.5 to 6 here, basically the exact same optic a little bit larger housing, a little bit more weight, uh, same mounting system, same exact uh, variable power lever here on the side, same illumination. Um, the uh, illumination is powered by a standard three volt battery that's commonly available, same backup sights. Um, this is a 1.5 to 6 power model. This is for 7.62 by 51 NATO. Um, one interesting thing that Elkan offers is they offer both these models in either a 5.56 or a 7.62 reticle. So if you prefer to have the slightly larger um, range here on the larger optic for your 5.56, that is an available option. Uh, enough talking, we're gonna go to the tower. We're gonna do some shooting out to 600 yards with these things. It's nothing that we haven't done before, but we're just gonna have a little bit of fun today and uh, show these things off and just see how well they perform at six. Let's go. All right, guys, we're gonna punch out to 600 yards with the L-cans here and uh, take some shots at various shoot steel targets uh, ranging from two to 600 yards. And I'll quickly elaborate about my experience with the LCAN. Uh, the first time I was exposed to this type of optic was with the M79s that the Canadian military was using. Uh, we've done a few training missions with some Canadian military folks, and uh, I didn't get to personally use those optics, but I did get to check them out and look at them. And they were pretty cool. They always kind of intrigued me a bit. Uh, the M79 is one of the earliest versions of this optic, and they did have tritium inserts uh, in the optics on the early ones. Uh, so that's kind of neat. Uh, the one that I actually got to use uh, was the rubberized uh, M145, uh, which is an excellent 240 Bravo optic. Um, as far as I know, the only ones that we ever used or, or had access to were the 308 uh, ballistic ones that had, uh, you know, basically the rubberized housing and all. And I used those in some limited amount, mainly in training. I, I never really saw uh, many of them directly in country, although they were around. I, I did see them floating around on some other people's guns and everything like that. So the 145 is the, the L-CAN that when everybody thinks of an L-CAN in the U.S., they think of the rubberized M41. It's got the weird rubberized housing, and it's basically the same type of principle. Where the Spectre takes over is, you you know, like Chad said, you've got the adjustable power prism to go to one and a half to six, which is great for, you know, if you want to dial down to one and a half, get a nice wide field of view, see what's out there, and then dial up to six and engage. Another thing that troops were complaining about with the M145 was the fact that the stadia were a little bit thick and uh, kind of large on that particular optic, which made engaging targets out the long range a little bit problematic because the stadia would obscure the, the line of sight of the gunner uh, behind the machine gun. They fixed that with the DR uh, by having basically little windows open there, and it gives you kind of an area, uh, an area crosshair stadia, which may not be as precise, but it's faster uh, to range and everything. And there is a built-in range finder, so they give you a 30-inch uh, area that will fit into the range finder. So if you know something's 30 inches tall, whatever it may be, a wheel on a car, whatever, if the wheel on that car will take up the, the, the range finder, then that's how far away you know it is. So pretty simple. I'm going to shoot the gun and uh, shut up here, but for what it's worth, there's my uh, perspective on it. Anyway, Let's try it out. 
Uh, where do you want me to go first? Two? I guess just start at two and just move your way out. I mean, that's what that thing's built for. All right, this thing's made for M80 ball. That's what I'm running. I'm running some of the German uh, MEN M80 ball. It's the cheapest M80 ball I could find. Nothing fancy here. Oh, you went right over the top of his head. There you go. Are you aiming for the head? Yeah. <laughs> All right, there you go. Right over the top. All right, headshots at 200. Ah. All right, now that little Charlie down in the bushes there, he's hiding down at 400 yards. I'm gonna see if I can't say hello to him. Ooh, that's hard to see. You got him. Ah. Yeah, that gong um, doesn't ring very loud because it is kind of far away. Well, it's a 50 cal gong too. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's true. It is a 50. It's a All right, uh, I'm just going to go for six, I guess. Do it. We're running a, uh, a Dead Air Sandman S on this uh, rifle, just in case anybody's curious about the suppressor we're running. All right, just, right uh, under it. just low and, and right. Gotcha. Wind caught you a little bit there. Mm, don't know. Remember, that's 550 meters. Just under it, same place again. Well, I don't know, Eric. Maybe you're hitting right over the top of it and it's dropping behind the gong. Um, just right, maybe, it looks like. <laughs> you're splashing all behind it. I can't tell if it's going right over the top, though. You know, let me try to bring my hole down just a smidge. Now you're about a foot under the plate there. There you go. Dead center. Yep. You're all over there, boy. It sure doesn't ring very much. All right, let me reload a mag. We'll shoot another string, not too bad. Uh, you know, it is meters versus yards, so there's a little bit of loss in translation there that's literally just user error, has nothing to do with the optic or the gun. Um, boy, there's nothing like shooting a scar, man. That ammo seems a little bit anemic in the big scheme of things. You know, know. It, and it could be, we are running some pretty cheap ball, uh, but this thing is supposed to have, you know, uh, trajectories calibrated for M80 ball, which is what you'd be running in a, and a, you know, uh, a 240 Bravo or, or crew serve weapon, which really, this site excels the most on a crew serve weapon, um, but it can work in a somewhat precision role. I wouldn't call this a DMR setup, but you know, it sure is fun to shoot. All right, we're gonna give 600 a try again, just having a little fun here, and then we're gonna get Chad on his little AR there uh, with the other uh, one to four Spectre. Just having a little fun. Uh, we've arrived at the uh, conclusion that this ammo is probably a little bit anemic, but it could also be the fact that this is a 16 and a half inch barrel. Now, FN, if you're listen, listening, dang it, you gotta get that 20 inch gun out now. I'm telling you, we're tired of the 16 and a half. We want a 20. Every time I ask them about it, I get a different answer from every person I ask. Yep, and come to think of it, I think that that particular optic has graduated for a 20 inch barrel gun. Yeah, I, I like a 20 inch in a 308. Oh yeah, 16, 16 and a half is cool, but that 20 is really a nice little velocity boost. Yeah, for 600, it's nice to have that extra barrel length. It is. Uh, tell you what, I'm gonna take a couple of shots at the eight inch popper. Let's just see if maybe aim small, miss small. And... Yeah. Right over the top. Good windage. Yep. Got it at about 10 o'clock. Just low and left, down there about seven o'clock. Yep. Yep. Stack those on top of each other. I uh, got the bottom of it. 
just left again. I mean, look like. dang thing's pretty accurate. I mean, for ball ammo and being the cheapest ball ammo I could possibly find, I well, mean, it's... I wouldn't really call that a precision optic anyways for long range stuff. I mean, no, you're getting into... But, but I tell you what, you're, you're definitely uh, making somebody regret poking their head up. Oh, yeah. All right, I tell you what, let's see if we can make the gopher reg uh, regret <laughs> existing. <laughs> Oh, now, now, this is definitely not a 600-yard gopher optic. No. But, you know, because we are who we are, why the heck not? Try it. Let's see what you got. Uh, that was high and right. Just off. Getting closer. Uh, just still slightly high and right. Oh, just past his belly. Got him. Right past his head on the right. Same place right there by his head and neck. Oh, that was way off to the right hmm. past his belly. Same place off the right past his belly. Getting closer, slightly right. Yep. Tink. That was uh, left past his head a few inches. Yep. Tink. There you go. <laughs> I'll take that. You know, Shoot. I mean, this gun's not made for that. You know what I mean? No, and this optic's no. not made for that. I mean, and I'm using ball ammo. I'm not even using precision ammo. And it's not a bragging thing. It's not even that I'm even that good of a shot. It's just, man, when you get when you get a setup that's just put together well and you really think about what you're doing and take the time to zero an optic properly and kind of get it dialed in and sort of spend some time and figure out what's going on. I mean, a lot of these modern guns will really, really throw them in there if you can, you know, take some time and, and do it right. The Geisley trigger helps. Um, but, you know, th this is a killer gun. Uh, is that to say that any 308 you mounted on will perform just as well? I'm sure. You could take a P308 from POF, or you could take a, uh, uh, what, one of the H&K offerings. Oh, good God, yeah. I mean, and, and those are, you know, some of the most accurate 308s in the world right now, some of those H&Ks. And uh, any good 308 semi-auto rifle, uh, this optic would be a pretty dang good pairing for. So, I'll tell you, uh, though, the scars just never cease to amaze me, though. I know. They, know. they shoot so good. And uh, I, this is one of my favorite rifles, if not my favorite rifle. And uh, I love my ACOGs. I don't want it to seem like I'm, I'm taking a poop on the ACOG in any stretch of the imagination because I do like, I have plenty of ACOGs and I love them very much. Uh, but I believe the LCAN does have its place. Uh, it has its feature set that uh, I believe probably outdo the ACOG in a few areas. Um, I would say clarity wise, uh, ACOG's probably a clear optic. Uh, but this, this optic definitely excels at the purposes you see here. And I would imagine on a crew serve, yeah, you could you could definitely uh, <laughs> oh yeah you could do some some good stuff with a crew serve with one of these on it. All right, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Chad. He's going to play with the AR a bit, and uh, yeah, pretty cool optic. We'll see what Chad thinks about his at 600. Let's do it. All right, I'm going to take a few shots from 600 with the uh, Spectre DR, the one to four here on my little AR. This is a little 14 and a half inch uh, barreled rig. This is a BCM barrel. Uh, got a M4 2000 suppressor on the front of it. This is just a little DPMS build that I put together. I think this was my this is the first AR that I ever built, like 12 or 13 years ago, however long it was. And uh, it's been through a few revisions, but it shoots good. Got one of the little Gemtech suppressed bolt carrier groups in there. And uh, yeah, I'm just uh, running some Lithuanian GGG ball ammo. Uh, I was running a little bit of Freedom earlier in some of the B-roll shots and all. And while that ammo does shoot exceptionally well, this is what I zeroed this gun for. So at long range, really want to show its capabilities and just how this optic tracks. And this, uh, particular reticle is graduated for M855 out of an M4 platform. So should be a little bit more right in right in line with what we're looking at with the uh, reticle there. So I'm gonna start at two and just move on out. You ready? Ready? Yeah, you're going for headshots at two? I'm not sure if I'm gonna go for headshots, you know, but. <laughs> it's not, small, it's not, small. A, not a scar, you know, but. <laughs> so typically on the reticle, like, I zero for the top of the dot, and then the bottom of the dot is 200 meters. So go for it. I'm gonna aim just for center mass, basically. At two. There you go.
All right, there's a few shots of two. Yeah, it's in there. All right, that wind's picking just a little bit. So I'm gonna go for, all right, so it's 400 yards, so that's about, uh, what, 370 meters, give or take, somewhere yeah. like that. So I'm gonna hold just slightly low of four. Maybe just a hair left yeah, for the wind. Yeah, just a hair left for the wind. Ooh, boy, that thing is hard to see in that grass. And Charlie in the wood line down oh, yeah. there. <laughs> and the rice paddy. Yeah. You got him. Ah. That 50 cal target just doesn't even ring. Yeah, man. you're not going to hear it. If that 308 ain't going to make it ring, that ain't. You're on it. Yep. All right, yeah, I heard it. It's right. barely moving it. <laughs> it's like a fly landed on it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yep. All right, let's just go for the gusto. We're going to go for six. So I've, I've been shooting this optic quite a bit uh, on this particular rifle at 600 yards. And you hold right at 550 meters, just right in between those two lines, and it'll sail them in all day long as long as you do your part and you read the wind and all. And uh, I think, though, the favorite, my favorite rifle that I shot this on so far has been that Atrax. I mean, yep. it was just right at home on that thing, and oh man, it just fit the bill so well with that rifle. Why don't you go for that half size way on the left there, since it's a clean target? Yeah, you know what? I will, because I haven't shot that one this far yet before. Yep, that's a very challenging target. Mm -hmm. Guys, you got to remember, this is a 14 and a half inch barrel. This is a pretty long shot for an M4 length barrel. All right, so 550 and slight left. Yep. Go again. Yep, you're on the bottom of the plate. Good. Yep, keep doing that. Yep. Uh, just to the right. You got the wind blowing just a bit. Uh, you still got the wind carrying you a bit. Okay. Hold to the left a bit. That may have been too far. Yeah, maybe. Split the difference. There you go. Yep. All right, so you said aim small, miss small, right? Yeah. All right. Heck, I'm gonna try that popper. Okay, that eight inch on the right, just for just for fun. Yeah, go. Why not? I got a little bit of ammo left. Yep. Let's see. This is definitely some hard shots you're taking. I mean. Yep. Well, I mean, think about it. I mean, the vertical steady in this reticle takes up that entire eight inch popper at 600. So I mean. <laughs> this is definitely a good way to test the optic out. Yep, you're on it. Just over the top. Way off to the right. Yeah, I pulled that kind of. <laughs> That's easy to do. Well, shouldn't be pulling any shots with this guy's laying here, but you know, it happens. Right in front of it. Just to the right. You're probably shooting about a eight, maybe nine inch group. Yep, you're kind of all around it, man. Yeah, um, one thing of note, I was out here with a 16 inch carbine that I have with a, uh, with a three and a half power ACOG on there, one of the TA-33s, and the same ammo, I was keeping pretty much my, um, my entire mag on a 12 inch target. So, I mean, it, it can be done. That was on a really nice calm day too. Yep. Got a few more rounds left. I'm just gonna go for that uh, big round there and just yep. settle them in. Yeah, shoot, shoot a group of whatever you got left and let's just see what we're looking at. Good, do that again. Good, keep doing that. Yep. Um, I would say that those last shots 
were within about the size of a pie plate. That's With acceptable. two of your shots landing just about in the same hole, you, you had a couple of good strings there. Yeah. Well, um, hope you guys enjoyed this look at the uh, Elkan Spectre DRs. These are really, really awesome optics. Um, they are sort of a niche optic. They are an expensive piece of glass, but really I think, like I've said before, where this thing is at its true home is on like a bullpup. Um, just with the, uh, the rapid capability of going from a single power up to four power for longer range shots. Um, the Stadia in the reticle being graduated for like a 16 inch or 14 and a half inch carbine basically with military ammo. I mean, it's hard to beat for like a life and liberty rig or just something that you want to set up. Um, you know, if you're a military law enforcement guy, you carry a carbine in your truck, something like this would definitely fit the bill for that. Um, and like Eric said, these things have been around for a long time, been using the military and his experience with them has always been pretty positive and all. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed this look at them and a little bit of long range shooting. We, we relish any opportunity to get out here and shoot long range any day of the week, but stay tuned guys. We've got a lot more stuff on the way. So uh, until next time, take care.